have this piece that I've drilled a hole in. I've used the ball opener to drill my hole. And now I wanna to try to get some height. So I've already made one, uh, one change that works against me and potentially one change that works for me. So uh, because I've centered this, I've, I've started it with a slightly wide piece. My base is gonna be about this wide. If I started the piece narrower to begin with, that's gonna get me a little bit more height. Also, adding more clay. If I add, if I start with a little bit bigger ball of clay, that's gonna get me some more height. But from just here, there are some things I can do to increase my height. One more reminder, and that is you don't wanna to try to go from you know four inch pieces, if, you, if you're ending up with pieces that are four inches and you're trying to get to eight inches, work your way up there. Aim for five inches, then aim for six on the next piece. Work your way up, don't try to jump all at once. All right, so I have compressed the rim, I've flattened the floor, now I'm ready to pull up the wall. And so I'm gonna make sure both uh, sides are wet, and then I'm going to, uh, remember, if you're pulling up a wall that you want straight, your outside fingers are a bit higher, keep your eye on the inside wall, use a little bit more pressure on the outside, all of those things will help you keep this wall straight. So I'm gonna start to pull up this wall, and this first pull is just gonna kinda even things out a little bit. I'm moving nice and slow, my wheel's not moving too fast. Now that wall is taller, but still a little bit thicker on the bottom. So once I get the inside wall wet, I'm really gonna grab this clay at the bottom. I'm really gonna grab with my outside finger. Then once my outside finger and inside finger meet up, I can start to ease up um, and use a little bit more consistent pressure. Now as I go, I am checking my wall thickness. Oops. Looks like I scraped a little bit there and got, got it in my way. So I'm checking my wall thickness. Because I was focusing so much on the bottom, my bottom's a little bit thinner, my top's a little thicker. Now, if I'm trying to make a piece be tall, it helps me to keep it narrow. And if I wanna keep a piece narrow, it helps me to think, keep the top a little bit thicker so that I can collar. If you try to collar a thin wall, it's gonna to start to collapse on you. But collaring a thick wall, you're able to get a couple more collars through before you need to come back and pull that wall up. So now I'm paying close attention to where my wall thickness is. It gets a little bit thicker here and then it thins out. I'm actually gonna leave this section and just take care of the bottom because the other thing that's helpful is eventually you're gonna have trouble reaching the very bottom of your piece. So I grabbed that clay at the bottom. I really dug in to that clay at that very bottom section, using a little bit more pressure on the outside. And now I've gotten to this section that is a transition. It gets a little uh, thicker right through here. Before I get much, before I thin that out, so this part's thinned out, this part's a bit thicker, and this part's kind of thick. I'm gonna do another collar because that those thick walls collar better, particularly the thick rim. Those things collar better. I'm now gonna have trouble reaching this section, but the good thing is I'm already done with that. I'm essentially pulling this wall in sections. So this pull is starting in the middle and coming just about to the top. I'll start in the middle again and come just to the top. Now, I told you to watch the inside wall and I started watching the outside wall. That is essentially because I'm trying to keep myself braced and I can brace my inside hand against my body like this, it gets trickier to brace it this way. And so I've shifted my position a little bit so I can brace it. Another thing that help, can help my wall stay strong when it's thin, it's a thin wall holding up a thicker wall, is if I use a rib to compress the wall and scrape a little bit of the water off the surface. And that kind of dries out that clay um, so that I can keep working with the rest of it. I'm gonna collar again, paying particular attention to how thick my, uh, where the thickness in my wall transitions. And then I'm coming back to pull. The whole bottom, what, two thirds or three quarters is already pretty thin. So as I get up, to, as I transition from that area, I've gotta be real gentle. My wall is, I mean, my wheel speed is a little bit slower than it had been. And now I can work through just this top section. And now I get to start to kind of thin this top out a little bit. Sometimes up at the top, particularly when it starts to get really thin, I start to switch my hand position. All the while I've been throwing with a hand on the inside and a hand on the outside, 
but sometimes up here I start to switch to a pinch grip. Now I don't do it by itself. I like to support it with the other hand, keep things steady. But that pinch grip sometimes feels like I've got a little bit more control right up at the top. Now that's if you're steady, if you're stable. Notice that when I'm touching the clay, the clay is uh, moving this whole time. The wheel is still spinning. I am definitely not stopping and starting the wheel as I go. I'm keeping it steady so that every time I touch the clay, my hand is coming in gently, touching the clay, allowing the clay to, to move within my hands, not forcing it to stretch, but my hands are essentially coming to where that clay is. And then when I'm done, I'm letting up my pressure nice and easily. Now, the thinner you get, you're gonna have to start using a rib. I, I like to use a hand on the inside to support that. If you wanna support the bottom section here, now this part I've already ribbed, so it's nice and strong, but through here, through this kind of curved section, you could use a tool inside to support it because you're not gonna be able to get your finger in there. Now, it depends on the size of the tool. I've got it pretty thin already here. I'm gonna do another collar. And one of the things you should be noticing here on the top of my collar is that, uh, that uh, it's getting uneven. I think that I expect that your collar will not be as even as the rest. And if you keep your pull steady, you may end up with a little unevenness. When you collar, you're wrinkling the clay. And so if you end up with a little unevenness up here at the top, that's, that's fine, right? That's part of the process, you cut that off. Now, hopefully it's not a lot of wrinkle, um, but as you're learning, you may have more. Now, I'm gonna cut that rim off, but because it's so narrow, I don't wanna just come in like this or support it just on the inside. I'm actually gonna support this wall on the inside and outside so that my whole neck, that skinny neck can easily twist and move on me. I don't wanna let that happen. I'm also gonna support my wall with my these two fingers are supporting the wall while my right hand compresses it. And you can see I'm bumping the wall, the rim around a little bit or the, the top around a little bit just because it's so skinny and it's supported by so little. When you throw in the middle, um, you sometimes end up with some unevenness there. You can leave that as long as it's, uh, you know, it's a decorative choice. Um, but I sometimes use a, a needle tool end in the inside to smooth that as well. Um, just make it look more even. Not as, not like I got lumpy drips of slip happening in there. Oops. So I've gotten quite a bit of height off of that starting point that, that I began with. And so I didn't bring a ruler over, but let's compare to this guy, right? So taller than my, my uh, uh, knife, <laughs> my wooden knife. Um, so I'm getting pretty close to that eight inch uh, height with uh, not a lot more clay that I began with. Now, a couple of things to finish this off. I've used, a, uh, a, I've used a, a sponge on the top. I'm gonna get my chamois ready and I'm gonna do a nice undercut because right now this piece comes down and just kind of, it's really heavy. It has this kind of skirt happening around it. I know there's extra clay there, so I know I can be fairly aggressive in my undercut because that bottom corner is where your floor and your wall meet. So you know there's gonna be extra clay there. Now, an undercut on a cylinder means that you can basically skip most of the trimming. You're just gonna do a little cleanup. Um, or you can plan to flip it over and trim it as well. This one's gonna to have to be trimmed in a chuck to support it. Um, and so uh, limiting the amount of time it has to ha hang out in the chuck can be really helpful. That big, deep undercut gives me a nice shadow and a nice ending point for my glaze. And then I'm ready to wire this through. Oops, forgot my chamois. I'm ready to chamois the rim. Particularly with stoneware, I find that the chamois is a much nicer rim uh, finisher than is the sponge, particularly than the sponge that came in your throwing kit.